Hello everyone, my name is Victor and today I want to explore how you can use real-world data to create a mountain like this. In this video I'll try to cover everything to get you kickstarted into using real-world data inside of Houdini with the help of KTT. First we will cover sourcing the data, after that we will import it, I will show you multiple examples of how you can fix potential problems with the data and then we will go into creating the mountain that you can see in the bottom right. For that we will adjust the data, texture it, and later on I will show you a different example for adding more details to it. Here are some good sites that I found, but there are definitely more that you can explore on your own. For this render I used the Swiss one, so let's open it, scroll a bit down, and as you can see here's a map, and everything that's pink can be downloaded. If we zoom in to the bottom, I think, yeah, here's the mud one, and you could go ahead and select a single tile and go from there. Or you can, for example, use this select by rectangle and then press new rectangle, select the area. I think something like this was used for the height field. Here you can adjust the resolution. So you get like an accuracy of half a meter. And after that, press the search button here, wait a moment, and then you can export all the links which will give you a CSV file with all of the download. After downloading the data you should end up with a folder of some TIFF files that are all white and that's by design as they are normalized to range from 0 to 1 but instead match the real world data. So the highest value of the TIFF file should be around 4400 and that's also the height of the mountain peak. Before we jump into Houdini, one last side note, I will use the KTT accessories, which will add a few nodes that I will use, like the KTT D-band or tile import. So if you want to follow along, make sure to grab those, as well as KTT over on Gumroad. The accessories are free. Once we have sourced all of our data that we want to use, we can hop into Houdini, throw down a height field file node, if we want to import a single tile. And let's just do that for the time being. That's how, for example, the style here looks like. We have a lot of detail. The resolution is 2K in this case. And we could go ahead and work with this one. If you, however, encounter any tiles that have this stepping in here, this bending, it's caused by yeah, a bit depth that isn't high enough. And you can throw down a KTTD band to get rid of that. Just the value however you like until you find something that works for you and then you could proceed and work on the single tile. If we however don't want to import just a single tile but all of the tiles all at once we can use the KTT tile import and then jump over to our folder where we have all the tiles. If we look at the name you can see that the second and the third number both increase so they are representing the x and y axis with the swiss data um, you don't really have to rename them and adjust them but the only thing that you have to do is replace the entire number with the expression stated in the tile import node so tx and replace this one with ty and then you can hit tile import and the node will automatically fill in all of those tiles. Those values in here, they work fine for me. Like the TIFF data has real world scale, so a height field scale of one works out. And they are, they have a resolution of 2000 by 2000 while having an accuracy of 0.5 meters. So it also matches the tiles I have stated in here. If you don't have a beefy PC or if you know that you selected a ton of tiles and maybe the resolution is a bit high. It might be worth to go in, right click the node and select allow editing of contents. Then you can dive in and inside this for each loop, you can throw down a height field resample and that will limit the resolution of each tile that you import. Like I stated, each tile in my case has a resolution of 2K. So I will lower the resolution by quite a bit, just so that I can 
work with the data, import all of it without my PC crashing. If you, however, um, can import all of those styles without limiting the resolution, um, do so to get all of the details out of tiles. What you can also do um, if you imported all of this and want to quickly iterate and work with it, um, throw down a height field resample right here instead of inside of the node. And then you can go ahead once again, limit this to a specific resolution. I think 3K works fine with my PC for recording and also adjusting the terrain. And then you can go ahead and disable it for the final cache. Okay, after we imported our height field, you can see that there are some problems with the data as we have no information on those tiles. And there are multiple solutions or ways to fix that. For example, you can just use a height field drop, zoom a bit out and get rid of the problematic area and call it a day. And that's what I ended up doing for my terrain. I think the final view is from somewhere here. So it wasn't a problem that I cropped a bit of the data away. But let's for a second imagine that um, the data missed right in the center of the terrain. Then we can just crop it away, but we would need to find a solution to fix that. And I'll go on a short side tangent because I didn't end up using that, but I think it's important to get the idea across that you can treat the side field like you would treat, for example, an image in Photoshop and use some of the same approaches. And if you have ever used Photoshop or a similar program and you have some area that you don't want, you often use a clone tool. So you would take part of the train and somehow clone it over and replace this area. So let's try to do the same inside of Houdini. So first of all, I want to transform the height field. For that, we have to transform height field, which uh, shifts the entire height field around. Or alternatively, we can use the KTT transform, which um, does the same, but keeps the yeah, canvas at the same position. So as you can see, we shift the height field without um, moving the canvas in here. In this case, it doesn't really matter which one we use, um, but there are two options. Next up, I shifted the height field a bit over, and then I will use the KTT combine to recombine those two height fields. And the blend method is set to blend, and as you can see, we end up with this that's definitely not what we want. So what I will do is I will use this mask inside of the KTT combine to isolate this area and replace it with the shifted terrain. We can use multiple ways to mask it, but I think in this case we can just use the height of the terrain and mask everything that's below a certain height. For that, we can use the height field mask by feature and select height instead of slope. After that, compute range and adjust the ramp. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. And you can see there are still some issues with this method. So let's expand the mask and add some padding to it. And there we go. It doesn't look perfect, um, but we can adjust this transform and find a more fitting position that can replace this area and find something that works better. Something like that will do. And we can also use um, KTT adjust to adjust the height of the strain by using the recurve function. So I would like to push this area a bit upwards. And this works well enough. 
now you can see there are still some issues and I found that you can once again use the KTT combine and set blend mode to max instead of blend and that gets pretty much rid of all the issues in there if we use a clear mask you can see that we blended the terrain I can't really see a transitional area here and if we combine the now and then the before you can see that we got rid of this area without um, changing the height field too much another thing that you might encounter are some problems with the high frequency detail of the terrain or the low frequency and in order to fix those you could for example blur the height field and subtract the blurred version from the normal version to extract all of the high frequency and then add them back on top to get the original height field back and then we could go ahead and fix any problems with the high frequency or just low frequency data with a cleaned up terrain we can move on to adjusting and texturing it let's look at the final result inside of houdini before going over each node that made up the terrain one by one As you can see, I have a height field resample here. This one I disabled right after I finished the entire process and before I press the save to disk button, just so I could iterate faster. And the first thing that I did is I used the height field sharpen. This height field is fairly detailed, but I thought, okay, I might want to add some more sharpness in there. After that, the next area that wasn't to my liking was uh, the steep part here and also this one here and in order to fix that I decided to use the smooth talus and target only the really really steep areas and as you can see they get cleaned up somewhat I also used this deviation with the straighter noise in addition and that adds a bit more variation I also threw down a KTT terrace, which didn't end up doing that much, but you can see here I get some stepping in there, which looks nicer, especially once I increase the resolution a bit. Once again, um, this wasn't really necessary, but I thought I might want to use a displacement on those cliffs as well, but at the end of the day you can pretty much disable it and get the same result. Lastly, um, I used the smooth fluvial erosion. And as you can see, I end up with this mask here as I outputted the age. And besides the mask, I also get some really final erosion in here. And I think that added a bit more detail. The mask that you get out of here could be used for texturing. I didn't end up using it, but if you want the mask but don't want any of the erosion, you can use the KTT combine and just transfer the mask over to your height field without transferring any of the erosion data over. After that, I threw down a snow base and only used the um, deep snow here without any dusting and adjusted the height fall off and also added some wind to isolate certain areas i decided to use another snow base just for the dusting without the deep snow here because i wanted another snow line just for the dusting so that it's further up here you can see i had an area where I didn't want any snow, so I went ahead, created a mask, inverted that, and used that mask um, for the KTT snow base in here. So I ended up with the snow with just dusting enabled, this one also has only dusting, and this one has the deep snow. Then I combined them. And by using this method, you could really art direct the snow and place it wherever you want. 
And especially if you have real world data, you have the perfect reference that pretty much guided where I placed my snow and what I did here. Here you can see I used the copy layer to create a new field just so I have the mask for the snow. And that was pretty much it. And I didn't want to do much more with the strain, especially um, since the original data already looked this good. But later on I will showcase a terrain that was fairly low res and didn't look nice. So there we can explore some different methods to process existing data. But in this case um, I mainly fixed like the steep areas, removed some of the bits that didn't look nice and went ahead and added just a bit more sharpness and detail while also creating the snow mask for texturing. Yeah, here I threw down a high field file cache. Let's get to the texturing. Um, first of all, I applied this large scale texture here and just to vary up the brightness of this PBR texture that I tiled across the train. After that, I distorted the color to get rid of some of the problematic areas and vary up the texture a bit more. And then I tinted the slopes a bit with the KDT tint. After that, I used the height field mask by feature with a slope ramp and height field ramp to generate a mask where I want my grass to be. Then I thought that I would like to remove any grass that's directly next to the snow. So I copied my snow mask to my mask field, shrank that just to get rid of some of the tiny bits in here, like this one pixel of mask, and then re-expanded it, blurred it, and that way I have a larger snow mask with a fall off that I can subtract from my grass mask to remove any grass that's near the snow. Here I apply the grass and use the fluvial infection to add some color erosion. Next up I added the snow and if we zoom in you can see that I don't have any grass that's directly next to the snow. That's about it. Here you can see the texture in Houdini and for the texturing in my DCC and for adding a bit more detail I decided to export the color, then I exported a slope mask and exported a mask for the grass. For the background mountains I chose different tiles and did pretty much the exact same setup and it also applies to the texturing. The lake is per height field with a crater that I noised up and then added a KTT lake to it. And here you can see some data that I got from a different website that isn't as high quality and I wanted to try to add more detail to it and that worked out fairly well. I just increased the sharpness by a lot, added some noise on top and basically did some displacement and used the fluvial erosion to get to this point. After that I added some cracks and also the crevasse node with a low depth and low feature size to add more detail to pretty much all of the terrain area. And after that you can smooth the entire thing out with the smooth fluvial erosion. And here I also use the smooth talus to sharpen up some of the peaks. After that I ended up with this terrain here. And if we compare that to the initial terrain, you can see that the result is a lot sharper and it has a lot more detail without ruining the entire structure of the train. I hope this was helpful and I'll share the Matterhorn files on the Discord.